So I just got back from a trip to the south where I shot some photos and spent some time with the family. Today's shoot is in Oxford, Mississippi. It's very hot out here. after every trip is do a little inventory of what I packed and what I actually used. That way I can get a pretty clear idea of what to pack next time. And so I've got my two bags right here and this one's mostly filled with camera gear and this one's like other stuff. I'm gonna take them out and show you what I got. So it'll also be a kind of what's in the bag thing that I know people enjoy. But first, this beard's driving me crazy so I gotta do something about it. Okay, so that's better, right? I'm thinking maybe I'll shave it and go baby face, but for now this is about uh, how I normally do it. So anyway, um, almost everything that I took is here, except for the monopod, which I left in the car trunk because that's where I normally leave it. Uh, I didn't use it at all. I used it for like 10 seconds, so uh, I definitely don't need the monopod. I took it to use as a, um, as a light stand, but I didn't need a light stand because I just stood in the photos and made myself the light stand. The only other thing that is not in this pile, but that went with me, is the camera, the Joby stand, and the microphone that are right here. These items right here. So I was planning to shoot a video like this while I was down there, and I started to do it, but then my brother showed up and I just started chatting with him and ended up, so I didn't use these. Well, I used my phone a lot, obviously, but I didn't use the little tripod and I didn't use the microphone that much. Although I could have, and I should have, but I didn't. But those aren't the things that I'm going to take out. Like, I'm always going to carry those with me in case I do want to make a video in the future. I took my waterproof shoes because it was supposed to be raining a lot. And I knew at Splinter Creek where I was photographing was in the woods. And I would be walking through the woods and in the mush and stuff like that. So these were very helpful. All-terrain shoes. Of course, it was hot down there, so I wanted to bring my sandals. And I did. And I wore those a good bit, too. But obviously I had to wear the shoes on the plane because there was nowhere to fit them and all this stuff. Here's a neck pillow that I barely used. Would I take it again? Yeah, probably. When I need it, it'll be really helpful. We'll start with what's in the backpack. Water bottle, always good to have. This is more of the like work but not photo shoot stuff. I mean, obviously I put the camera in here. So there's that and my charger for my laptop. Um, one of the higher wattage chargers for the iPad and the phone and stuff like that. I would have taken Autumn, but he didn't want to go. He was busy here. Camera strap, I used this a lot when I was scouting for shots. Splinter Creek is the new housing community development thing outside of Oxford, Mississippi. Lang Architecture made the model house for, and I went down there to photograph that model house and the grounds. That was the, the nature of the shoot. In my little bonus pockets here, I've got a battery charger. Those are always helpful more iPhone cords, more chargers. This is the wire for that microphone that goes to the camera, as opposed to the specialized wire that goes to the phone. Another charger. I picked this up on the way back. I bought this in Nashville at the airport. Um, I'm a big fan of John T. Edge and all his Southern food histories. Uh, this is my down jacket that I took in case it gets really cold, because obviously it packs down really small. And so it's good if it gets cold. I, I used it a tiny bit. Tablet for editing photos. I had expected to do more work editing photos while I was down there. Didn't end up doing that much. Wireless keyboard so that I can use this roost stand to elevate my laptop when I'm working on it. So that it's kind of like that. So I'm not um, looking down at it the whole time, but look straight at it. And that's very good for posture. These, a lot of these things stay in my bag all the time. Like the camera's always in there. This laptop stuff is in here if the laptop is in here. Um, these socks were in case I got cold on the plane. That didn't happen. Uh, my headphones, which I almost didn't bring until I remembered that, you know, when you're trying to use the in-flight entertainment, you need to have wired phones. And so AirPods aren't gonna cut it. So those will stay for future trips. I. I don't think I used my mouse at all. And because when I'm doing like photo editing on the computer, I just use the, the Wacom tablet. 
My umbrella got very little use because in Mississippi, you're usually just going from like the building that you're in to the car, the driving somewhere and getting out and going inside the building and getting a little bit of rain drizzled on uh, is usually how it goes. A lot of people down there don't own umbrellas at all, uh, but I'm from the city and you have to have an umbrella in the city or you get your day ruined. So I always travel with it anyway. I should maybe get the smaller version of the umbrella. This bag was pretty new before I went, but I set it in the dirt a lot because I was very hastily setting up shots out in the wilderness. My iPad, which um, I used for reading books and I used to control the camera during the photo shoot. Laptop used for doing work and editing photos. Snacks, because you always gotta have snacks when you're traveling. These uh, field trip meat sticks are really tasty. And what's this? A pen that I forgot about. And that, I think, is everything that was in this bag. And this bag's really nice. You saw I had lots of compartments. I'll show you some more. Let's see. What else is in here? This is the pouch that this camera strap came in, but it's microfiber, so you can use it to wipe your glasses and your lenses and stuff, which is pretty smart on that manufacturer side. Spare camera batteries, of course. Backup. Micro SD cards for the drone, backup SD card for the camera. I also got the camera. Uh, the charger for my Apple Watch. Uh, USB drive just in case. The small charger for these two doodads. A band aid, because I always manage to hurt myself when I'm out on shoots. Two band aids, because I manage to hurt myself a decent bit. That's everything that was in here. Okay, bye bye. Okay, so part two. This is the bigger, much heavier bag. We'll start with what's in this outside pocket here. I got my driving gloves, uh, which are really useful in the south when it's really hot outside and the steering wheel is burning hot. But fortunately, that didn't happen this time because it was rainy and overcast a lot, so I didn't need those. This is a crystal deodorant stick. It uh, uses salt crystals to kill the bacteria in your armpit. Toothbrush. My various fancy pants sunscreens. This is a little light stand topper that lets you put a um, speed light on it. Uh, I often forget to bring these little toppers for my uh, light stands and then I can't put the speed lights on them and that's a foolish mistake that I've been trying to break myself of. Hair cream, tea, green tea. Gels that I didn't end up using. More snacks I forgot about. A little tripod foot or a light stand, speed light foot that I didn't use. I've got all my clothing up here in this little pocket. I have another speed light foot that I didn't use, some parts of my tripod, including these little spiky feet that I should have used for one shot where I was in the mud, but I forgot to take them with me when I walked out into the mud. This handy tool from Three-Legged Thing uh, is really nice because it's uh, it's got the flat, flat head and a hex key. Those are the two things you need when you're affixing plates to the bottom of the camera. So in this case, this one fits right there and lets me switch this little uh, speed plate for this L bracket. And I use the L bracket when I'm mounting the camera like that with a um, cable in it that goes to the camera ranger. So that's really handy. And you need the other flat side. I'll show you later. Got my sandals, which I wore, wore a whole lot bunch. The sandals are comfy. Never leave home without your trusty headlamp. Some more clothes. Um, I don't think I wore these jeans a single time, so shouldn't have brought those. I only wore these on the plane, and by the time I got in Mississippi, it was too hot for these, so I probably shouldn't have packed these either. This is my um, Arc'teryx windshell. I don't think I used this at all. I packed the... Uh, camera gear in with lots of socks and underwear and smaller pieces of clothing. Uh, Giotto's rocket for cleaning my lenses. I don't think I used that because I cleaned my lenses before I went. They didn't really get dirty. Um, my Canon speed light, which got a hell of a lot of use. Um, I used it in almost every shot and I was just used it in my hands like this. This is the bottom part of my monopod and I got this because it's three feet and it can stand on its own and I can use it as a light stand or as a little tripod or something like that. I liked the idea of it when I got it because I couldn't find like a travel tripod that I wanted and 
So I brought it because I already had it instead of buying some like collapsible light stand. But it's heavy and I didn't use it at all. So that's definitely not coming next time. Um, the Cam Ranger, which is obviously indispensable for architecture photography. This is a little um, water sandbag. So instead of sand, you fill it with water to weigh down your tripod or whatever. Didn't use that at all. Uh, would probably have used it if I had light stands outside. This is my ball head that I put on the monopod for that sort of stuff. Didn't use that. Gaff tape. Uh, I used this a little bit for flagging off windows. I like uh, taped some blankets up to block light that was coming in from behind my scene, ruining my dynamic light there. So gaff tape, always useful. This is my bag of wires. This is what my um, podcasting microphone came in, and I use it for uh, wrangling other wires that aren't in my backpack. These little f-stoppers diffusers that go on top of speed lights, I didn't use those at all, but I could see where one of them might be used in the future, so I would still bring at least one of them. My other two speed lights, the cheapo Yungnos, uh, I didn't use those at all, so those aren't, aren't getting with me next time. Camera battery charger, you can't you can't travel without your charger. It's foolish, so that's always gotta go. Autumn. Autumn didn't come with me, but I wish he did. Uh, when I pack my camera lenses in these little Canon bags, so here's the 24 tilt shift, obviously the premier architecture lens. And I stuffed the bags with these little dividers that came in another camera backpack so that they're nice and padded in here. So they won't get busted if like, you know, I always try to carry on this bag and be gentle with it myself, but if it had to be like gate checked, I want to make sure that they're not going to destroy everything by like dropping it 20 feet, which I've watched happen to other bags. Horrified is the 100 millimeter for my macro shots and for anything where I want some nice lens compression. I do kind of want the 70 to 200 lens because I do want to get more compression on like longer shots. But generally in New York, you can't get far enough away from something to use that. And so hasn't been like super necessity lately. But here where I was like out on a boat on the lake or like on the opposite side of the lake, a really long lens would be great. This is a grid for the speed light. It doesn't take up much space, but I didn't use it. Probably don't need that in the next time. But maybe, you know, the thing about some of these modifiers and lights is that, like, I didn't need them at this house, but I could go and shoot another house and absolutely need them. So there's the real question of like, well, do I bring them or not, you know? Maybe I try it without it next time and I see how much I regret it. Um, clamps, I also use the clamps for when I was flagging off stuff holding up blankets and stuff like that. This is a different speed light holder that is much better than this piece of junk. Uh, it's got a built-in, this is from Manfrotto, and it's a little like speed, uh, quick speed light mount thing that they made where you just kind of slide that on there and it clicks in, which is really cool. And, and then it's kind of springy back and forth like that and you just spin this to uh, tighten the speed light into it. Like so. Eh. Let me tighten that up so you can get better. Like that. Uh, that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. And if you're shooting with speed lights, pretty handy thing to have. Got all of my batteries here. I, I thought that the batteries in my speed light were almost dead. And then I was going to have to replace them like the second I got there. I didn't replace them at all. The, the batteries that were in there lasted me the entire shoot. And I had all these extras, didn't need them. It's good because I didn't bring my battery charger. But, you know, with so many backup batteries, didn't need it. Uh, this is the trigger that triggers that flash wirelessly, which is a very important belt, which I barely wore. This is a Benro's travel tripod. When I bought my monopod, this wasn't around. It didn't exist. And I wanted like a travel tripod to take to Hawaii when I went to Hawaii last November. And I just didn't see anything that I really liked except for the like really right stuff one, which was like $1,000, which I didn't have. This thing costs like 150 bucks and it's really light and really nice. And I almost like it more than my Manfrotto tripod. Um, it might be like a slightly less stable because my Manfrotto tripod is made out of carbon fiber and it's a little bit bigger and sturdier. But this thing is nice and light and folds up and fits in my luggage. And I think I'm gonna be using this a lot more. Uh, this head is obviously pretty massive for this little thing, but you need a geared head 
for architecture photography, so there's no getting around it. And so I was talking earlier about this little doodad. And so the other, the flat side works on these big, bigger plates that have a flat head, like so. I was always taking my little plates off of the camera so that I could put them on this tripod plate because it doesn't have an Arca Swiss compatible quick thing. So that was really annoying. So I bought this little thing that lets me screw the plate that I need right on here. There we go. And then that can go right on there like that. And then that screws down and there we go. Pretty snazzy, right? Only cost a few dollars. Made my life much easier. Polarizers, one for the 100 millimeter, one for the 50 millimeter. I did use both of these when I was out on the lake taking photos of the environment. I didn't use them when I was in the house at all. This is the lens hood for my tilt shift, which I have never put on there. Although I like tell myself I'm gonna use it sometime, but I never ever have. This is a little lens brush. These are super helpful for when you get little dust bits on your lens. Of course, you can clear it off with uh, where the rocket go. Anyway, we saw the rocket a little while ago, and whenever that won't get pesky dust off, one of these little brushes does the trick. Here's a battery for the drone, and the polarizer filters for the drone, the drone, and the controller with this little thing that keeps these sticks from getting all jammed up while it's in transport because it do this and then if you travel with it and just like stuck in the bag and these things do this when you turn it on it's going to be really mad and so i got this little thing to keep them from moving which is snazzy extra props for the drone in case i crash it fortunately i did not even more double a batteries hiding out uh, this is my color checker for uh, getting a gray reading or for getting accurate colors i didn't take that out of the bag at all uh, it's always good to have these extra little lens cleaning cloths. Um, my rental shop has them and I grab them every time I'm in there. Charger for the drone. Miscellaneous odds and ends. This is a Tide stick. This is a shout wipe because I wear white clothes and if I get anything on them, I don't want them to be destroyed. So I have to take care of them. Sunscreen, NSAIDs, which I didn't need. Cloth. Insect repellent, which I didn't use even though I was wandering around outside a bit. More band-aids because you know me. The only other thing is clothing and I wore pretty much all like light summery stuff. And I wore pretty much everything in here. Um, I did bring, I always like want to dress very like fancy as if I'm like going to the Hamptons. And so I brought some like really nice clothes, but then I'm like wandering around in the woods in Mississippi and everybody's wearing t-shirts. And I'm like, why do I bring fancy clothes down here again? And it's just a habit that I can't break. That is everything that I brought to Mississippi. Going back over it, uh, what I didn't need was heavy clothing, and I didn't need my extra flashes. Pretty much everything else that I took, I used. I'd say that's pretty successful packing. Two, four items out of all of this that didn't get used, everything else did, for the most part. So, did pretty good. Could do a little bit better next time, but um, it would be nice. I'm gonna be really happy to not carry this thing, because this thing is like solid metal and like really heavy. And so that can definitely go, and that's a good lesson. Anyway, that's that's what's in the bag for this photo shoot plus hanging out at the family's place adventure. Thanks for watching. Bye.